Hi, I'm Patty with Studio Air 12, and today I'm going to show you how to do faded, gentle background greenery on black and white boards. All right, so to get started, I've got my board painted in number 22 and number 27. I believe there's so much paint on that I can't. 28 is black. And black and white boards are going to be really different, so I'm going to show you today how to do this faded background um, greenery on your blackboard and your whiteboard and show you what the differences are. So it'll be a teeny bit little dip our toe into some color theory, but it's just um, just the darkness of colors and the color family. So it won't be too deep, so don't be scared. Stick with us to the end. Okay, we're gonna start with our light board and I've got two greenery stencils and they're just a lovely little um, kind of background greenery. And we are going to have a project showing how to use this technique on a whole thing, so make sure that you check that out. Um, that'll be on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified when we have new content. Okay, so the neat thing about the greenery is you can flip it this way or that way. And I want to show you how to do the very backest part of the greenery first. And that's going to be the fullest the greenery will be. So we want to have it full back there, then we'll pull it forward with a little bit of a different color, and then we'll bring it forward to the stuff that's in your absolute foreground, the stuff that's right in front. Okay, so we're doing the back stuff first, so I'm looking for an appealing look. I don't like how this just kind of goes straight, so I'm gonna flip this around <clears throat> and get it anchored with two pieces of tape so it doesn't slip and slide. Our stencils at Studio R12, um, we have something like almost 7,000 stencils, so make sure that you check us out. Um, we have so much that you can layer and put together. Um, the project that we're gonna do actually takes an independent word with independent greenery and an independent frame and pulls them all together. So you can use your stencils over and over and you can use things you've had for years to create really unique um, projects. Okay. Take our dome brush. The dome brush is the key to not bleeding under your stencils. You wanna make sure that you are using a dome brush. It is super stiff and doesn't allow the paint to slide under. We're also using some green colors and some, I guess we've got cream and black as well, but we're using colors that have no water in them. So this is very important when you're stenciling. We're going to dip with our dry brush, dry dome brush into a green color. And then we're gonna start off that color theory, I promised right here, right now. All right, so this is the selection of colors that I have. It's um, 43, okay, so let's see, now that's 54, 43, 58, 41, and 32. I may not use all of these. As I'm layering, I'll, I'll know that I might need to dip into some of these. We're gonna start with these two because see how they're kind of like a cloudy green? They're not like bold and vibrant like these two guys over here. And then I chose this one because it's a dark green with a little bit of yellow in it. See how it's good? just kind of a, I don't know, like a camo green. It's kind of a yucky green, but it's a really good greenery green. Okay, and then what we're going to do is in order to not have the colors sit on the background and jump out at you and go, here I am. We're gonna start with our background color. I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna offload it on my palette, on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit with my cream color in the brush, and then really right on top of that cream area, I'm going to wipe that color off. And then in theory, what I have done now is I have made a new color. Okay, so it's basically a little brush blend of number 54 with number 22, okay? And then what I wanna do that for is the closer that green is to the color of the cream, the further back it'll push it. So when you have your background colors, as close to your background color as possible, everything will settle in really quietly. So that's a really good way to have detail, but not have extreme detail, okay? And then to give you a clue, if I was to take the same color, I'm talking my brush straight dry and I know it. If I was to take this color that I've mixed on this brush and put it right on my black, that's gonna not be anything like my background and that is going to be screaming green instead of gentle green. It just depends on what color you put on your background. Really good point. Okay, so I'm gonna dip a little bit more and get my tape back so I don't lose my reusable palette. Okay, so wipe off as much as possible. I want this really dreamy. 
So now I'm gonna use the swirling technique, which is no pressure and just a little gentle swirl. And I'm gonna take a look and see what I've got going on. And let's be peekers together. Okay, so see how gentle that is? See how good that lays in the background? That's what we want. So today we're gonna to be florists. We're gonna build some greenery. And this is what um, floral designers do all the time is they take background light pieces and um, create a frame almost for the thing that will be featured. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a peek. Always be a peeker um, with stenciling, it's legal. All right, I like that very much. I'm gonna go with a little bit more white and very little of the green. And you can do a lot of um, detective work on your paper towel. Um, you can see that this was strong, this is a little bit lighter, and then this is lighter still. Um, and then I'm going to poke a few pieces of greenery. I might wipe my, my um, stencil off and then just poke a little bit on the other side because I like the shape of that piece. And see how that's even setting further back in the background. This is gonna make this look nice and full. I'm gonna sneak some of this out here and I think I want this one a little bit stronger. Now what I could do if I wanted it stronger and darker is I could pick up my cream and then go into number 43, pick up just a little bit of that and have a dark similar to background color. So it's gonna change the just the mood of everything. So I think this is lower down so I want it kind of a little bit more shadowed I'm going to peek at that and see. Okay, so see how that just kind of brought it forward just a little bit. And I also see that I was not being careful and I have a little bit of bleeding. So now is the time to deal with that. So I can just go and blot the couple pieces that I see. I should have spent more time on my paper towel. If you do not offload, you will have bleeding. The dome brush will save your bacon. I'd say 80% of the time, but if you don't respect that paper towel, it's gonna not do the job, okay? So I'm gonna pick up that darker color again. Gonna switch, I think one of the reasons that I didn't spend very much time is I ran out of room. So we switch to a clean side and just really make sure a dreamy technique is only gonna be dreamy if you take some time on the paper towel. So now let's go and get some of this. and hold it all down. So sometimes you'll notice when your stencil flops over the edges of your surface, especially if it's a tall surface, you'll notice that your stencil will bend a little bit up in the middle where you want it to be flat. So what you can do is you can take another board and you can lay it right under there and it'll level it out. So always have some scrap pieces of wood around. All right, let's see what that did. Yeah. And then I think maybe a little something, something right there, but maybe just a little twig. And I'll use that same dark. Okay, so see how nice that is, nice and full. It doesn't resemble my stencil at all because I've just used bits and bobs of them. So whenever you are looking around at your stencils, um, looking at, this floors right here, you could really pull that apart and you could really use the different words in your backgrounds. You could make it be a, a, a main word. You could use um, all of these elements separately. So don't be afraid to move things around. Now we're gonna go into a stronger green. And I think then what we'll do is we'll just use these greens untoned. So we'll just use, I'll wipe out my brush, pick up the green number 54, and then see what a difference that is on my palette, and I'll even go ahead and show it with the other colors. It's a super strong contrast to that, okay? So that should show pretty well. And I won't spend quite as much time on my paper towel just really neutralizing, but I will wanna be careful that I don't bleed under. Okay, so now we want different places for our stencil to go, and so I will Choose, I'm gonna choose this guy, and then I'll just kind of stipple him. Okay. 
and I know I'm going to have this greenery on top so I don't need to worry about bringing the lines all the way into the base. So see how he pops right up in front of those guys. Isn't that a fabulous technique? All because we neutralized with our background and then mixed with our colors. So this color became like the parent color of everything that we're doing here. Okay, and then we'll get some, I think some of this stuff right here. Reload, same color, number 54. Yes, that is fabulous. Okay, and now we'll go. So this is the same as this, but I can do it in the opposite so it won't look the same. But I think I wanna do this guy over here. The more your brush gets emptied of paint, the softer it will look. So that will give you some variety and variation. Okay, and then we'll go through, let's see. Just a little bit more, and then we'll be ready to add our front stuff on there. Maybe these little guys right here. Notice I just let this guy alone, and then I'm giving these two, these two little guys a home. And a little bit more right over here. Okay, I love it. Love, love, love. This is so much fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this because this will make such a difference in your projects when you have framed things or things that are um, kind of lonely looking. You can tuck just a little bit of your greenery in the two corners. Um, I'll show you that really quick as well just so that you get a sense of that. So I could reach this greenery in just gently, softly, softly in my corner and now you've got just that little tuck over there to balance out the two. You put a peace word here, you put home, relax, love, whatever you wanna put in the middle, and then you have just a really different piece of art. Okay, next we're gonna to go to these other greeneries. Now this is obviously too big for the board. However, when I do my project, it's going to be just right because it's a bigger board. So I love that you can use these and not worry about them being too big. Okay, so now we're gonna go in here and I really don't know if I'm gonna get my greens and yellows over here going because this is such a gentle, soothing thing. I might save those for the black. Gonna pick up straight dark green, the 43. Mm. As I'm looking at it on my palette, I'm like, mm, I think I want just a little bit of something. So I'm gonna grab into that very green green, number 41. And so see what that mix did? It made it from like a dead color to like a little bit more alive color. Neutralize. And then we'll see what happens. I think I need to move him up just a little bit. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this branch right here. I'm gonna go soft and feel very, very nervous. Okay, so let's talk about nervous before we peek at this. If you're nervous and you don't know what you're doing, paint is such a good eraser. So you would gently sand this board if you had just jacked it completely up. You would gently sand the board and you would go right back into number 22. You'd rebase coat and start again. So, and you can practice on cardboard. So don't forget that paint is just, paint is just the medium, right? The play is where all the fun is. So don't be afraid of paint can always redo it. All right, so let's take a peeky peek. Okay, so see how that is powy right there in front. Let's take this guy and bring him up here. Now what I am gonna do is I'm not going to um, go over these leaves. I'm gonna let those leaves kind of stay separate. I'm gonna see where that leaves, or that leaves me. <laughs> that was a good one. Okay, we're gonna get me some more paper towel. Little bit of our green. A little bit more of our green. Okay. So I want a 
Now, when you are doing leaves, and you can take a look at this today when I was driving into work, um, all of the branches of the trees had ice formed on them and the sun was hitting them and they were so sparkly. Um, pay attention when you go outside. Look for your distant greenery. Um, the grayer something is, the more receding it'll be. I wanna take a little bit of this really neon green before I lift my stencil and kiss the tips of those greens right there because they're kind of in the very, 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 very front. They're at the tip where the sun's coming down into our piece and I'm not gonna do a lot. So we'll just hold that down. Give a couple little kisses. Sun's not gonna be hitting right down here in the middle of something because this all stuff on top is gonna shade that stuff. So I'm gonna hold it down. I'm gonna take a little peek. Yeah, that little touch of green is just perfect. Okay, and then we'll go. Neutralize our brush. So when you go neutralizing, you go into the color that you were in before and you pick it up. If you get stray hairs, um, these do fall out every now and again. Bristle brushes always do that. If you have somebody that's a brush that's behaving badly, um, just let us know. They are amazing brushes. Okay, so go here, I think maybe a little bit higher. And then we'll do that little kiss technique here too. And notice I'm not bringing it all the way in that, the whole leaf, I'm just at the tips. And peek. Love, love, love. Okay, a little bit of this over here. And then I'm gonna show you, let me show you a trick really quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have greenery, we have a lot of stems coming in and doing a thing, right? We can take our dome brush, really wipe it off, and we can just go in that background and fade all of that stemmery into the background like it's got other stuff happening right there. Just let it fade out. And that will give your greenery just a little bit more weight. And we might even go over here to our corner. Round our corner out to frame it. Okay, and now we'll continue. Now we need some of these strong things going on over here on top of that. And I almost think because that's at the bottom, I'm gonna dig into our camo green. So I've got this bright green, I've got our camo green, and I've got our number 43. So I've got 58, 41, and um, 43. And now here, We'll make this be where the strongest color is because that's in the bottom of the bush. So if you go to the center of your bush, it's gonna be the darkest in there. And now I'll lighten it as I come out of the center. And I think a peak, maybe a little bit stronger. Okay, so yeah, that, I think it's perfect. Okay, so to recap, keep things as close to your background color as you can, and now I'm going to make your brain switch, and we're gonna do the same thing differently on the blackboard. So what we're gonna do with the blackboard is we're gonna do exactly the opposite as we did with the whiteboard. Okay, so we're gonna take our black, it's gonna be our neutralizing color, and we're gonna take the black and we're going to work from these darker colors backwards. So our highlight up front color is gonna be our light colors. So it's exactly reversed of the other, the whiteboard. Okay, so we'll put black in our brush. I'm gonna get rid of that paper towel and get a new one. Excuse me, neutralize. 
Black is our mother color. Maybe today it could be our father color. So I'm gonna go into number 43 and then see what that does to that color. Like that is just so neutral. Um, it's just really gonna sit down nicely on top of the black. We're gonna do the same exact thing that we did before. We're going to decide how we want our greenery to be growing. Oops, wrong greenery. I thought that looked a little heavy. So I like the idea of these ones kind of arching out over that way. So let's put on a couple of those. Take a peeky poo. Aha, see how cool that is. So see how that sits down exactly how the light greens sat down over here on the black so they're not screaming at you. Okay, and then we'll just build the exact same as we did the other. It's not gonna look exactly the same. That's the neat thing, it's gonna be very organic um, because you are doing a unique piece. Do make sure when you're flipping your stencil around that you are dry or you will be sad. Let's see if that's even gonna show. I feel like my brush might be too dry. Yeah, it shows just enough. Reload. I don't know if I need to re-neutralize, but I will anyway. Okay, so then we will, we don't want everybody leaning out the same way, so that's why I'm flipping and changing um, my stencil around. I'll make him reach out just a little bit further. This is way more fun, just kind of freestyling this than I thought I was gonna have today. Um, this is actually super relaxing. This is blast. Okay, so we'll go, it's like coloring, you know? You're choosing just the right color for the space. Don't let too much of the straight lines stick straight out. You wanna break them up a little bit. And then let's go here. Ooh. Hold on to that stencil. Okay. I like it. Okay, so now we'll go in with our neutral and we'll go into the lighter color. And so you can see that that is, this is way lighter than this is. So that is gonna go from, from here to here to here. And that is into number 54. And let's see, I don't want things to appear the same. Okay, so hanging on. Oh, I can already see this, yeah. Make sure you tuck that little bit on the edge will add a nice touch. And then, ta-da! See how that just moves forward. And we don't want that line to be the same. We'll give this little kind of curly guy a chance here. All right, if you guys are enjoying this, make sure that you ask your questions, make sure that you give us a thumbs up. Um, it helps with our algorithm tremendously. Um, everything, if other painters want to find us, you guys get to help them find us by giving us a thumbs up. Okay, so where are we gonna go next? Not here, not here. Did the little bird guy. Everybody's leaning the same way, I don't want that to happen. And so see what I've got going on here? These two are mimicking each other. Let me show you how to handle that. I have got makeup. So I'm gonna go into my black. I will just feather that little puppy out right here and fade him down. And he will dry and not be so obvious. Okay, so see how that just made him recede. So he's not so obviously the same exact um, thing going on right there. All right, just a little bit of fill down here. Probably gonna need just a little bit more. I didn't pick up more black this time because I'm kind of getting to the front foreground. There, yeah. 
Now in this case, remember that I said on the whiteboard that um, you wanted to do that little scumble down here um, to make it darkest in the depth of your greenery. The blackboard is doing that for us, so we won't scumble with the green unless we feel like the black is way too black and we need to lighten up our shadow area. In this case, I'm not getting that vibe, so. All right, so next we are going to choose, I think I like the idea of this going here. Notice also that I stepped down. So um, the first is here, the first greeneries are here. The next greeneries are like inches down from there. My inside greeneries are down from there. And now when I come onto this, it won't do any good to have all this beautiful background if I make all of the foreground take over all of the background. So now I'm going to drop this in and allow the greenery to still show, but um, stagger it down. Okay, so now we're going to use this green, number 43 as our base, and we're gonna go into, we'll go into that green again. And I might need to kiss it with a little bit of this brighter like I did the other. I think this step is gonna feel basically the same. I may need to be a brighter green, we'll see. Notice that I'm using a lot of vocabulary like we'll see, I don't know, because I'm making this up as I go, right? I'm just reading the room, if you will. I'm seeing what colors are sitting well together and then I'm responding um, with color to whatever is needed. It's almost like, you know, are you hungry? Eat some food, you know, that kind of thing. Um, okay, so let's give a couple little smoochies to the tops of these leaves. Okay, and now we have some foreground. I'm gonna have something sticking out over here. Neutralize again. Gotta get some green in there. Okay. This one I'm doing is stronger in the middle and then I'm using lighter pressure to lighten it up just a little bit at the tops. Let's peek at it. See if that got me where I wanted to go. And I got one little catch. It's not a bleed, but my um, stencil caught the edge of what I didn't wipe out and it made it um, thick there. And so that makes it not faded there. We'll go into our yellow. Um, it would make more sense to do the yellow all in one step after you were done um, to balance your colors out, but I don't have that luxury because I'm flipping the stencil everywhere and it would be impossible to line it back up. You could do it, but it would take a lot of work and I don't like work, so we're gonna not do that. So I'll do it as I go. Ta-da, look how pretty that is, love it. Now this guy right here in the very front is gonna be, we want him tilted. Um, try not to go like straight up, straight up, straight up, or you're gonna be like blades of grass, okay? You don't want that, you want a kind of a little bit more natural look. Now I'm gonna pick up the green and just go green right there. Anchor it all the way to the ground, get my finger out of the way. And give just a little touch of sunshine to the top. Okay, and let that, ta-da, beautiful. Okay, one more little spriggy sprig. something in this corner. So we could do that technique that I showed you in the other. I'll go into number 43. Um, we have a paint um, conversion chart that will tell you what 43 is from our color number to Sherwin-Williams and DecoArt Americana. 
So um, that is available on our website, which is studior12.com. Um, make sure, once again, give us a thumbs up if you're liking this at all. So let's do that technique. Really, really, really wipe it out. So my black is just a little bit dark right there. And it's making it feel like I have to keep adding greenery to soften it. So I'm going to soften it with my brush instead. Gentle, gentle, soft, 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 soft. Pressure is everything when you're trying to do faded techniques. Okay, what do we think of that? I like it. Um, I'm gonna go over it with a little teeny bit of black. I think it kind of got a little too yellow down there. So I'm gonna just give that a little anchor with the black. So just a dusting of makeup, if you will. Okay, and then just like on the other one, let's give ourselves a little teeny plop of greenery coming down the other side. Neutralized already because I have the black can go into my number 43. Soft touch. So once again, my stencil is wanting to lift a little bit. Super soft pressure. And then you have that little bit of greenery poking out right there. And I think I want one more sprig. You know why? I'm doing the wrong one. So that's, it wasn't looking as gentle and sweet as the other one was because I used the really thick, um, the really thick um, stencil. Okay, so we're gonna go back and neutralize and I'll show you how to make that fade a little bit. So take that very gently. There's hardly any pressure at all. And now I can just make a couple of little wisps coming out behind that green that I just put on there. I don't need to take it away. And then that softened that look. How sweet is that? All right, guys, I hope that you have had so much fun. I thoroughly enjoyed myself with this project. Um, be bold with using your stencils in different ways. Uh, make sure that you are checking us out on Tuesdays because we are live on Facebook and on YouTube. And that means you can ask your questions in real time. And remember that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that will notify you because we're gonna use this technique in a full project and you're gonna wanna check that out. See you later.